Hey, good morning, girls. I hope you're doing well. I was going to try to sit out there this morning, but uh, it just, you know, it was beautiful yesterday morning and a little bit warmer. Today it's cold again, and I am walked out there and tried to set it all up to hang out with you out there, and all of a sudden I had chills up my spine and my legs, and that's not going to happen because chattering teeth while you're talking is not a good thing. So good morning. Today we're going to talk about people pleasing. And I know there's some of you that are going to cringe at this topic. And there's others that are going to be going, okay, I'm free. I don't have to be like that anymore. So I know we're going to be kind of a mix of both. Um, so hang in there with me because this is really key to growing your ministry and growing you as a woman of God. Because see, we've been raised... And we've been told all the way from kindergarten that it's about making others happy. It's about pleasing people. And that's the farthest thing from the truth, girls. Because our focus needs to be on pleasing God first. And see what happens, we forget that. Because we want to be liked. We want to have friends. We want to be connected. We want people happy. And I get all that because I'm right there with you. I want all those things too. But I had to realize recently is I can't please everyone. And there's a, a hysterical meme, and okay, I find it funny, that's on social that says, you can't please everyone, you're not pizza. So, and I think there's a second modification of it, you can't please, please everyone, you're not chocolate. So it's whatever your your favorite food is. That's what you're not. And see, I'm going to read, and actually I have it up on the screen, so I'm going to have to look away from you. So I apologize. <clears throat> Galatians 1.10. Galatians chapter 1, verse 10. It's kind of our theme verse for today. And I'm going to read it from the ESV, which is English Standard Version. And I just want you to think about what God says in here. Okay, because I think this is really pivotable, 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 Anyhow, it's crucial to our behavior as Christian women and us as thriving. So, in Galatians 1.10, it tells us, For am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please man? If I were still pleasing man, I would not be a servant of Christ. Let me read that again to you. For am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. So, now what? You know, we've been told that all along it's about, you know, making people happy and don't offend people. Don't upset people. Candy coat it. Make it look good. And I don't know if you girls are like me. I failed candy coating 101 in college. I really did. If you look like a skunk, you smell like a skunk, and love, I'm going to tell you, you stink. Okay? But that's because that's how I want to be treated. Because, see, when I grow my businesses, or if I'm sharing the Word of God, and I'm going down the wrong path, I would hope, one of my business peers, if my business is doing something really off-key that's going to get us in trouble or that isn't going to work or maybe somebody's already hit that wall and they want to help me, I would expect they step up. Because the difference, though, I think, and there's some business people that won't step up and say, Hey, Robin, I've already been down those train tracks. It's a dead end. And part of it is if your mindset... And I want you to listen to this. If your mindset is when somebody else rises up and is being successful, then now they're your competition, then you need to go to God and get your heart right. Okay, because there is no competition. Competition is for sporting events. And the way I see it, my business or any ministry I'm involved in is not a sporting event. It's not meant to be competitive. Because there's one Robin, and there's one of you, and each of us do things a little bit different. And it's kind of like I told when I did a training 
Cheryl Group, what was the product? Um, Beauty Control? I think that's what it was. But I went and taught their women on how to collaborate together. Because see what was happening is they became very protective, very territorial. They didn't understand the word collaborate. So it was almost like a cat fight in the room. But once they understood that people buy from a person, not necessarily the product, because at that time in the area we're in, there was probably 3,000 people that sold the product. So why would I buy it from you? And it's because of your personality. And that's what we need to understand. We don't need to be out there pleasing people because here's my question. What has God called you to do that you're not doing because you're afraid somebody's going to be upset with you? What? What are you not doing that God wants you to do because you're afraid you're not going to make people happy? That's a tough question to ask, girls. And I know it's hard to answer because there are many a times that I can say, well, I didn't do that because it might upset so-and-so. Okay. One of the questions when I took that to God at one time, and I said, but God, if I do this, it's going to stir up a hornet's nest. And I use that because we know if you go over and shake a hornet's nest, everything goes nuts, right? So what was going to happen? Well, God said to me, and of course, all I could do was sit there and bawl. My husband thought something was seriously wrong. God said to me, Robin, do you want to do what I've called you to do and serve women? Or do you want to keep that hornet's nest happy? And when he puts it that way to you, how can you not step into what he's called you to do? We've got to get past that point, girls, that we're always trying to please everyone because you're not going to. There's going to be some things that are going to happen. When you're obedient to what God has called you to do and you start moving and maybe there's support coming from different areas or maybe the people you're trying to reach, whether it's children, women, missionaries, whatever it is, all of a sudden, everybody, there's a buzz. What's going to happen is the people that maybe are the pew warmers are going to start feeling threatened. You can't worry about that. God says here in Galatians 1.10, who are we to please, God or, or people? Your first focus needs to be God. And that's hard. Oh, girls, this is a hard one to get over because we all grew up being taught to please everyone. We were taught in kindergarten how to please everyone. In your workspace, you've been forced to please everyone. Out of what? Out of fear. Because see, that's what happens. We go to that tendency of least resistance. And that's natural. What happens is if there's resistance in what God has called you to do, and that's because this over here may not be pleasing to everyone. You may have a little bit of ruckus going on. But... Over here is the blessings of God. What do you do? And sometimes it's hard. You get stuck in the middle. You're like, but God, I want to please you. I want to serve you. I want to do what you called me to do. But Susie Q over here is sure treating me pretty mean. She's snubbing me. And I probably just stated to myself, I don't know if we use that word anymore, snubbing. But I do. Basically, Walking by, sticking their nose up at you and ignoring you. Or the chatter behind your back. You have to make a choice, girls. Are you going to please God? Or are you going to please the peanut gallery? And I'm going to put it that way. Because the ones that you can't seem to please, I don't think you'd please them no matter what you did. And there are people out there like that. Stop trying to please everyone. Girls, get on your knees. You have a vision. You have a goal. You have a direction from God. You've been working on that from last year. We got through our first month of that plan. And I'll bet some of you 
have been put into a position where maybe you're not pleasing people. Maybe there's a little chatter going behind your back. Maybe you've been standing in a room and had people walk by and ignore you. Keep your eyes focused on him. It's hard, I know. I have come home many a times weeping that I've upset someone or that someone's not happy because I said yes to something or whatever it may be. But then, sorry, the puppy's around, but then I get refocused and then I realize if God has called me to do it, who can stop me? You know, when we look in the ministry and we look at some of the disciples when they went out, they weren't all welcomed with open arms and joyful greeting. Some of them were imprisoned. Some of them were killed. And I'm whining about some women, and I have to say women because I work with women, some women snubbing me and acting like high school children. What am I whining about? So I challenge you today, girls, what is it that you find yourself working so hard to make everybody around you happy instead of pleasing God? What is it? Is it something really small in your life? Is it something in ministry? Has God called you to step into something and you're hesitating because others may not be happy with it? Have you, with your children, do you not tell your children no because you want them to be your best friend? You want them to be happy with you, yet you know in your heart God has told you you need to have more time for him, but you tell him you don't have time because you've got to run the children and do all this stuff? This is something to seriously think about this year because this is going to be an amazing year for us. A lot of changes happening around us. And hopefully a lot of change is happening in us. You don't have to please everyone. You don't have to be a friend to everyone. And I apologize. Hold on. Hey, hey. Okay, I'm really sorry, guys. One second. Yeah, take that off. Chrissy had some... Uh, ice cubes, which are called popsicles in our house, and I think she has a brain freeze. So I apologize for the noise. Um, huh. But anyhow, what is it that you're so busy focused on making other people happy that you're not moving in what God wants you to do? I want you to seriously think about that today. And it's scary. Oh, trust me, girls. I know how terrifying it is to step into this stuff and feel like you're alone. But I want you to know you're not alone in what you do. Remember that Christ is always there with you. Always. He steps with you. Get yourself surrounded by other women of God that are like-minded, that have a vision, that have a passion, that can rally behind you and pray for you. Get plugged into a women's study or women's discipleship program and be consistent with it. Don't find excuses not to be somewhere. Don't find excuses not to be transparent with folks. And I'm going to call them excuses because I've made them too. What is it that you've been so busy pleasing everyone else in that you've not been pleasing God? That's your challenge for today. And remember, our verse for today is Galatians 1.10. And I'm reading from ESV. It says, For am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. We have to make a choice, girls. Are you going to be a people pleaser? Or are you going to be a God pleaser? Which one are you? I pray, girls, with all my heart for you 
that you will desire to please God first and foremost in your life. That you will put him before everything else in your life. Because what we know for a fact, girls, is when we put God before everything else, everything else falls into place. Do you please man or do you please God? Which are you choosing because you can't do both? But I will tell you, if you choose to please God, the end result is people are taken care of and pleased. If you choose to please man, God's heart is breaking. You've got to make a choice. You're not there to be a friend to everyone. You're there to love on them as a woman of God and be honest with them. Build them up and encourage them. And sometimes those words are not what they want to hear. Many a times have I had somebody ask me, well, what do you think about this? Well, I don't think about it. Let's look at what the Bible says. And when we look at that, the person gets upset. They did not want to hear what God had to say to them. What they wanted from me was a pat on the back saying, it's okay, it'll be fine, as they continue down a path of destruction. And I can't do that. I have to be true to God. And I want those around me to be true to him as well. Because then we can come together, we can collaborate, and we can thrive as mighty women of God. What choose you today? Pleasing man or pleasing God? I pray, girls, that today you'll just go before God and ask him, Father, which areas am I pleasing man in that I need to be pleasing you? Reveal those areas to me, Lord Jesus, and help me to change my focus to pleasing you. I pray this over every woman that's listening or watches us today. Father, that you'll just empower them to seek you first, put you first in their life. And I thank you, Father, for the lives you're going to change today. These women are amazing. These women are yours. And these women are called. We just love you, Jesus. Amen, girls. I pray for you today. Go out there and please God today. All right. Love you, girls. And sorry about that. I hit pause. <laughs> Love you, girls. And uh, we'll catch you tomorrow morning. All right. Be a God pleaser, not a people pleaser. Okay. Love you. Bye.